There you go, Councillor. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the Bromford and Hodge Hill online ward forum meeting. My name is Councillor Diane Donaldson, one of the councillors for the Bromford and Hodge Hill ward. Uh, we're expecting Councillor Majid Mahmood to join us later on in the, the meeting. Uh, so today's this meeting is of uh, Wednesday the 17th of August and it uh, will be a two hour meeting from 6.30 to 8.30. Could I remind everyone to mute your microphones and switch off your camera during the meeting please, unless you are the person speaking and that's to um, preserve the bandwidth. Then you should get better sound quality and visual quality. Um, we'll be taking, we've got, I'll just introduce everybody who is in the meeting this evening. So we've got, so far, we've got Jonathan Stevens, and he's a senior landscape architect from LPG. Pearl Roberts, program manager for the retrofit program from Asset Management. Edmund Crochet Markwell, community support development officer and Nazim, Nadim Aziz, who's also a community, correct me if I'm wrong, community support development officer. I think it's a neighbourhood action coordinator. Thank you. Thank you. Donaldson. Okay, thank you. And uh, I'll just read out the apologies. I've got apologies from Nura Ali. She's, she was going to present, but she will present at the next meeting about uh, an update on her Commonwealth game community project. Also got apologies from Inky Golby from the Environmental Agency and from Tina O'Dell from Taflo and she will present her uh, update at the next meeting. She just asked me to tell everybody that um, the swimming and the badminton are going extremely well and that's something that we continued after the Commonwealth Games celebrating communities has ended. So that's great news. Right, and we've got uh, also here. We've got um, Diran from Balfour BT Vinci. He'll be attend. Uh, he'll be updating on the HS2 projects. Um, I think we've got Dan Sanford Smith, who's going to update from Worth Unlimited, and also Paul Wright from who's going to update from the Hub. Uh, we've got Mohammed Ishak. Uh, Washwood Heath Association CIC, who um, is going to update on the Mega Mailer. And I'm not sure if we have Salma B, who from Sporting Pathways, who's going to up, update on, on the project they have. Right, without further ado, I'd just like to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded and it will be available for a future record. So if we could um, start off with the Bromford Regeneration Update and the Housing Retrofit Pilot Scheme Update. So um, I could ask Phil Roberts to brief us on that, please. Um, it doesn't need to be a, a really in-depth meeting briefing because we have the um, meeting the launch next week on the 25th, I believe, at um, Ambridge House, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., which is the launch event. So it's basically to let residents know what the retrofit is all about and, and try and engage with as many residents as possible. Yeah, thank great. You. Great. Thank you, Councillor Donaldson. Um, and thank you for inviting me uh, to your meeting this evening. Um, what I was actually going to do, uh, Councillor Donaldson, was um, share some slides that we will be using to support the um, launch consultation event next week. Um, I will try to whip through them fairly quickly. Um, and you just need to move me along if um, okay. if it's taking too long, because I know you've just said a, a brief update. So. And um, so please do just push me along if you need to. I'm going to share my screen if that's OK. Could I just ask Mohammed if he would. Um, take his camera off, please. Thank you. Uh, 
Okay, thanks, Pearl. Bear with me a second. Can you see my screen okay? Yeah, is it possible to have it slight, slightly? Yeah. Better? No, that's better. Yeah. yeah. Okay, everybody see Great. that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Brilliant. So, so, so what I've done is, um, I've, I've used a selection of the materials that we are going to share with um, tenants and the community at the launch consultation event next week. Um, this is the areas I'm going to cover. So, a bit about why we need to act and what we're planning to do. Um, a little bit more information about what the pilot is and giving you some examples highlighting the benefits and just an outline of what will happen next. Um, so that's what I'm planning to cover. Just to start in terms of why um, the whole hash retrofit project has been set up. Um, we have in Birmingham City Council a commitment to achieve net zero by 2030. The whole hash retrofit is part of the that journey. So um, buildings across Birmingham account for just over half half of the greenhouse gas emissions across the across the city. So actually tackling um, emissions from homes and through a retrofit program will make will make a contribution to our net zero um, carbon target. Um, Birmingham City Council also has about 60,000 social homes in its portfolio. Um, the cost of retrofitting that portfolio would be huge. Um, and currently, projects are rather small in scale and only progress as funding allows. So what the council has determined to do is to invest in a scale pilot, which really is an opportunity for Birmingham to be bold and to show that regional and national leadership and act as a pioneer in this retrofit space. Um, but that's that's not all. Um, in essence, the retrofit pilot project is intended to support a just transition and bring benefits to our tenants and local residents as well in terms of their comfort, their health and their well-being. Um, but the project, as it is off scale, will also contribute to the local economy in terms of growing jobs and skills and uh, local supply chain. This is also an opportunity for Birmingham to learn and take the lessons, which is exactly why it's called a pilot, um, that what we're looking to do is to learn those lessons in an iterative way as we go, as we as we progress through the pilot. So what we plan to do, we've got a pilot project of 300 um, social homes in East Birmingham in Bromford and Hodge Hill. We aim through that pilot to reduce CO2 emissions and work towards that 2030 target. It supports our clean growth ambitions and um, will improve the energy performance certificate ratings of homes. We have a legal obligation to get to an EPCC rating by 2035. So it will, um, it will move us forward with that for 300 homes, move us beyond that for 300 homes. Um, we'll also help support those who may be facing um, particular problems around fuel poverty, particularly in the current global context and um, the cost of living crisis and um, energy bill inflation. We'll also help through the project to develop the green economy and local jobs and supply retrofit supply chains. So what we plan to do, so the pilot is for 300 homes in total. We've chosen two archetypes. So we've chosen um, low rise flats and cross wall homes. So the plan is to retrofit 174 low rise flats to achieve an EPC rating of B plus and 126 cross wall homes to achieve an EPC rating of A, and that's using the Engie Sprung approach. 
both solutions include um, fabric first measures. So um, energy efficiency improvements, including external wall insulation, loft insulation, windows and doors. Um, but they also include um, renewable energy generation. So making use of air source heat pumps and solar and battery storage. The key difference for the um, cross wall homes part of the solution to achieve EPCA is the addition of um, digital monitoring, um, but also a performance guarantee and a comfort plan. Just to give you some examples of um, works that have been completed elsewhere. Um, so what you see at the top left of that screen is um, a solar roof panel array, and that provides clean electricity. You've got some visuals of energy efficient doors and the sort of finish, and also well ventilated kitchen spaces. As I said, the distinction between the EPCA solution is the development of a comfort plan. So the benefits of that comfort plan are not only is it um, giving you a home that um, looks um, good and more modern, um, but actually a home that's comfortable, warm um, in the winter and cool in the summer with better air quality and um, better ventilation. The comfort plan also provides some resilience against um, energy bill price rises. So you consistently know what you are going to be paying um, with that comfort plan. And that, of course, means that there's no big changes in your bills and it helps um, tenants to plan throughout the year. Just a little bit more a high level on that um, in terms of before the retrofit, um, you will tenants will pay generally an electric bill and a gas bill. After the, that retrofit, it removes the um, gas to the home. So it's fully electric and it's more energy efficient. And that en energy efficiency uh, results in less um, energy usage and lower bills. And their comfort plan is therefore a payment that is made to Birmingham City Council, which is a share in those savings. So just a, a bit of a visual about where it will be. So um, I'm sure you will you will recognise, hopefully it's big enough, but it you, gives you a visual of um, both our um, low rise flats and cross wall homes. Just delving into a bit more detail, that's the uh, just a graphical illustration of the low rise flats and similarly of the cross wall homes. Um, again, just to give you a visual of some examples of works that have been completed elsewhere. So on the left here, you see a pilot that's been completed with Nottingham City Homes. So these are cross wall homes and you can see the you can see the facade. You can see the solar panels here. You can also see actually one that wasn't retrofitted here in the middle of that row. And on the right hand side, again, um, an example in Sutton in South London. So you can see a before and after picture. So with the facade, the roof panels, the energy efficient doors and windows. So this this title is entitled Benefits for You. This is this is we'll be presenting this to tenants next week. Um, so performance of homes is actively monitored, monitored, and that supports health and well-being, um, helping to avoid fuel poverty, delivering comfortable homes, and helping to reduce energy consumption, developing skills and job opportunities that benefit local people reducing carbon emissions and on that path to net zero and levelling up housing stock and um, improving um, standards. Um, 
just a little bit about what will happen next. Um, the, the first series of Crosswell homes to be retrofitted will be at Little Meadow Walk and Cook's Peace Walk. So you see those illustrated in the in the graphical presentation, and then in the photograph. And low rise flats that will be on Dreghorn Road. So again, you see you see the blocks illustrated there. This are, these are illustrations only, but they they the pictures that give you um, a view of what the low rise flats could look like in the retrofit. And similarly, some views of what the cross wall homes could look like after the retrofit. Um, these are this is not exact representation of what it will look like um, in Bromford. Um, those design choices and colour palettes will will be developed um, through the design process. We're also looking to make some other improvements as we um, go through that pilot project. So there will be some upgrades to street lighting, which will be completed in the autumn. We'll um, do some works for communal gardens and also look at some flooring for some of the communal areas to be replaced. Um, properties are also currently being surveyed to determine if there are other works that are needed. Um, I'm going to stop there, Councillor Donaldson, if that's fine. Hopefully that's given a very brief overview and yes, I hope that's helpful. That's really helpful. Thank you, Pearl. That's an excellent presentation. Um, and I think it would be helpful because now we can go out to the residents and get, uh, give them an idea of what will be um, at the meeting next week and what they can expect. Um, if anyone yeah. here has any questions that they'd like to put to if I well, if I could just if I could just make a request as well. So yeah, um so we have um we have hand delivered invitations to the launch event next week, um asking um uh, residents to indicate that they'll be able to attend. We've got a fairly low response rate at the moment. Um so if colleagues can encourage residents and tenants to attend that would be most welcome we will we will definitely okay can i hand it over to the residents in the meeting if they've got any questions that they'd like to put to pearl dan thank you oh and then i'll take call afterwards yeah dan um, i was just going to ask um what the details of the meeting were so time date and venue so that we've, right. we've we've not heard anything about it from the hub so it'd be uh handy just to okay. uh, be able to pass that information out it's um it's 4 p.m to 7 p.m and it's at ambridge house so is it an informal meeting pearl I, I don't, what is the format of the meeting could you um so so we we there will be a presentation from Steve Wilson and um, we will have um, members of the um, local team on site as well. We'll have some materials that um, give an illustration of some of the um, external wall finishes and the windows and um, there'll be um, advice about um, other support avenues open to tenants. But fundamentally, there'll be a short presentation, but then it's um, you know, an open forum with um, demonstrations of different materials and um, a forum to ask questions. Wonderful, thank you. Um, Paul, you've got your hand up. Do you like to come in? Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can. Sorry, I was having, I was having technical issues earlier. Um, on the events, um, is it an open invite to any residents or are you, are you just wanting the people affected to come? No, it's an, open, it's an open invite okay. to um, residents in the area. Yeah. And uh, you say 300 properties. Um, is is the funding in place for all of those 300 or is that is so that those will get delivered or so, is that so the, to... so the simple answer, Paul, is the council has determined cabinet have made a decision to invest in the retrofit project and are making that funding available for the project right but there's there's no guarantee that the 300 
Is there is there a guarantee that those 300 will get completed? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. So no, you, you've, you said there was 300 properties that were going to get developed. Is will be retrofitted, yes. Yeah. That all, the, all those 300 are part of that funding that's been secured. Yes. Yeah. And but the, the other houses in the Firs of Bromford, would that be part of future plans or? Yes. So so as I said, the nature, the nature of the pilot is precisely that. Mm. It's a pilot that's enabling us to trial and test two solutions um, and to determine the potential for that to scale across Birmingham's wider um portfolio of social homes which is which is big you know it's the mm. biggest social landlord in the country with 60 62,000 homes and what the pilot's letting us do is learn the lessons incrementally um you know about the different solutions about how it works with the supply chain about how tenants experience it um so that we can look to the options for scaling that more broadly I guess my 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 only concern is you end up with a, a, quite a small percentage of the community having retrofitted houses and then the rest of the community not. So I'm just I'm just preempting. Yeah, some, so yeah. it, it it's, know, a it's a very, it's a very good point. Um, if I if I sort of flip that on its head, it is the biggest pilot project in mm. the country right now um, of 300 homes. Initiatives to date have only focused on a handful of homes, 10 to 20 at most. Um, so I think it is Birmingham mm. actually being bold and being innovative and recognising the particular challenges in East Birmingham and Bromford in particular um, to trial and pilot a retrofit programme. Mm. So that's just me flipping thank it on its head for you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Good question. Um, Pearl, may I ask a question? Um, in these slides, in the presentation slides, we saw a picture of um, some of the houses that have been retrofitted and there was sort of one that hadn't been retrofitted. Is that because it's a private res residence and, and um, will it be in, in Bromford and Furs, will it be across the board or is it just council residents that will yeah, so, so the, the the principle is, so if, if you imagine a row of properties like the, mm -hmm. the visual that you saw, our principle is that we are looking to do that, the entirety of that row. Um, so we, it, it is likely in that case in Nottingham that that's either a lease, that's probably a freeholder. So it's privately owned and they opted not to um, go for the solution. Um, Julie Griffin and Steve Wilson are very keen that we avoid that situation mm. with this pilot. Um, so what we'd look to do is to explore the avenues open to us to, you know, retrofit that whole row so you don't have pepper potting, essentially. Yeah, OK. Yeah, that would look aesthetically, it'd look a, a lot better. Um, yeah, um, the people that I've spoken to, they, 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 sound, they say it sounds very positive and uh, it, it looks very positive, um, something that much needed now with the the crisis the cost of living crisis so um I, I mean hopefully we'll get as many residents to the meeting next week so they can explain that they can ask their own questions yeah. the only po negative i've had about this has come from a gas fitter so it's come from where sorry a gas fitter oh okay <laughs> okay well, that's the only negative comments i've received so um hopefully they will retrain into the the green economy OK, so, um, oh, Dan, Dan, yeah, you've got your hand up. Um, just a quick one. In terms of yeah. uh, when the works are being carried out on people's homes in terms of disruption, and uh, are they able to stay within their homes uh, while all the works are carried out? So, so largely they will be able to stay in their homes, Dan. And um, again, we're, we're still working through some of the design detail um, with um, the contractor. Um, at Nottingham City Council, their experience certainly was that um, uh, residents could stay in their homes while the work's completed. Um, some of that is subject to access. So I think that at the worst case scenario is that there might be a need to be out of the property for the day, but not overnight and no need for decant. Excellent. 
Okay. Um, so I think you've answered everybody's questions. I can't see any further questions, Pearl. So that's given us a taste of uh, next week's event launch great. event. So we yep, look forward great. to that. And uh, thank you for coming along this evening. And thank you for your no, thank, attention. Much thank appreciate. you for having me. I, I do have to leave now. So yeah. but, but yes, thank you very that's much. Fine. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Pearl. Thank you. Okay, uh, I can see we now have um, Ron in the meeting. Hello, Ron. Hello, Councillor. Ron Williams. <laughs> Good evening, yep. Ron. Good evening. Um, would you like to update on the on for regeneration? What's happening in the area in, ter in terms of uh, house building, the, the parks, etc.? Okay, if you just bear with me. Hello. Hello, Ron. Thank you for coming along and briefing okay, us. No, no, no problem. Um, uh, I was supposed to be accompanied by um, some colleagues from the Environment Agency, but unfortunately, um, most of them are on holiday at the moment. So they send their apologies and have asked me to do a bit of an update in their stead. Yeah. So in terms of the work being carried out by the Environment Agency, the work on the south side of the River Tame, i.e. the bit that directly affects um, the residential side of Bromford, they're anticipating that most of that work will now be completed by December this year. Yeah, uh, The majority of it is already done. The, the main section of outstanding work is the access to the recycling centre of Bromford Drive, where they've had issues um, in, in design and getting the relevant approvals they require to basically do the work on council land. Now, um, most of that is now sorted. There is, to my knowledge, only one outstanding issue, and that is they have come across a situation where there are supposed to be some gullies uh, to, to help with the surface water drainage of the new road. Yeah, um, the the plans provided by um, Seven Trent and others basically say they're there, but they've gone in and they've found no gullies, basically. So it looks like the plans provided are incorrect, so they're going to have to do some additional design work. Um, that They're hoping that isn't going to slow them down too much, but that's the only bit we're going to have to keep an eye on because it may impact on their final timescales. But at this point in time, they're telling me they are confident they will complete all those flood defence works by the end of December. Um, and be out of our way, so to speak. Yeah. Now, once they're done, that should um, free me up to move forward on some of the um, housing design work, which has, which is dependent on the flood de defence works, mainly the um, larger development um, site. We are hoping to build some houses on up at the bottom of Berndale Road, where there used to be tower blocks up to about 20 odd years ago, which were demolished due to ground conditions. Um, and we, we are now aiming to, to build 76 new homes in that location. Um, 48 of those will be apartments in five blocks and the other 20 odd will be new homes. Now I should have, if I can share my screen, a copy of the latest layout. So I'll look if I can so I've got that available. So. Um, let's let's start with the old one first. Right. If you look at your screen at the moment, yeah. What what we've got is the plan we have shared to date, yeah, which is showing a two blocks of apartments, one across the top end here and one down the side. Now, once we, we decided that we were going to go zero carbon, it was decided that this was not the most efficient um, design for the apartment blocks. So effectively that has now been changed. So, okay, has that worked? Can you see the new plan? 
Yeah. Yeah, we can, Ron. Yeah. Yes. We okay. Can. Okay. So the, the the housing layer hasn't changed significantly. Yeah. Um, I think we may have one more house in there than we will be showing on the other plan. But effectively, you've now got actually it's four blocks now, a four blocks of apartments which are now going to take the place of the two large stretches of blocks we showed on the other plan. Yeah, but essentially the, the, the numbers are roughly the same. Now we are hoping that we can get the, sur the surveys which we had done before redone quickly, yeah, in order to facilitate a planning application. We are aiming for the end of September, um, but it is conditional upon A, getting those surveys updated, and uh, and essentially then being able to finalise the flood risk assessment, which will require sign off from, from another part of the environment agency. And once that's done, we will be able to finalise a planning statement, which which we're trying to produce that connects all the housing development sites on the estate. And just to remind everybody. OK, just change plans again. This, this is a plan of Bromford showing the location of all the sites we are currently looking at for um, housing developments. Yeah, the, the two with the kind of like yellowish tint are the, the two that are already on site. Those are the sites of the old Bailey and Tony Croft. The others are, are various sites we are hoping to, to put in for planning at the end of September. Now, if there is any slippage, then we'll notify people as soon as possible. Yeah, but that is the, the 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 current target, and if we and if we manage to, to, to if we manage to get all the, all these uh, sites in for planning day this year and uh, approvals no later than um, the end of March for all of them, then we should be in a real position to have started on site with, with actually all these sites, but by by 2024. That's that's what we're currently looking looking to do. OK. Now, in terms of the open space side of this. I'd remind everybody that what we've committed to was working with the Environment Agency to do the refurb of the um, old Bonford Bridge North site, which has been completed. Yeah, so that's the, that refurb has been has been redone and it's been reopened. We have produced a design around the shops, which has now got planning approval, and we are currently working behind the scenes to sort out the uh, the finances so we can get formal approval to, to appoint a contractor. And um, that's been slightly delayed because we were, this council have changed its um, the way we, the, the software, the financial software system by which we pay bills, and it's been slightly more disrupted than we originally anticipated. So we're, we're, we're waiting for, for some of those issues to, to be settled before we can push this through. We've also done a, a design around the old Comet Park. And the final section with which we promised to do was look at the area up by Berendale. To date, we have not tabled one, but we are aiming to table one tonight. So if my colleague Jonathan is available, um, I'd ask him to uh, you know, to present this to you at this meeting now. Jonathan, are you there? I am here, Ron. OK, Hello, I'll, I will unshare this and if you could. Uh, step in Thanks, and Ron. present the. Uh, new plan for Berndale. That's fine. Just one second. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, yes. OK, as Ron mentioned, there's significant housing developments in this corner of the site of Bear, off Berendale. And at the moment, we're significantly underserved with play provision in this part of Bromford and the Firs. In fact, the nearest play provision for residents of this area is the Bromford Bridge site, which is over one and a half kilometres away from the current um, square and proposal that we've identified. Um, I've been looking at what we could put in this square that was reasonably low key, 
but allowed a degree provision for younger children from toddlers up to around the age of 12 and older provision for older children up to senior adults and senior citizens in the form of outdoor gym equipment. And so the proposal that I've been working on, I'm just going to show you now. Can you see that? OK, so. The play area is the main focus here. We've cited it on this particular location just because of the topography more than anything it is the most uh, the, the flattest part of the site and. It will allow the min minimum amount of earth moving and uh, disruption to the, the square. We're proposing a widened and resurfaced footpath to replace the, the very straight and quite cracked and broken slabs that, that are currently there. And on the other side of the play area, we're providing a number of pieces of fitness equipment. Some examples of that are there and some of the play equipment examples are there. This is not necessarily what's ultimately going in. They're examples of what could go in, but we're going to liaise with the local community through a consultation event next week to see engage what local families might like to see there. Uh, future proposals could be additional tree planting around the square to improve the visual amenity of the site and provide a degree of screening for uh, existing properties. And I've also identified an area here which could potentially be a community growing zone that could be in the form of uh, either raised planters or a community orchard. Um, and we are proposing some seating that's mainly around the play area for parents and one circular bench in the middle uh, uh, of this area for resting whilst working out and as as a place to meet and chat when when using the, those local facilities. And that's about it. Any questions from anybody? Thank you, Jonathan. Um, do we have any questions? I think that the, personally, I, I like the uh, layout of it. It looks very good. Um, OK, we've got a call and. I'm seeing a call and. Paul, would you like to come in? Um, it's not a question. It's just the comment and it's I, I think it's fantastic. I think uh, the conversations that have been had, I think it really kind of um, brings all those things together. Um, as you say, next week there'll be the uh, conversations with with local people, um, which will obviously you know, obviously we'll, we'll see what we get from that. Um, I, I, I think uh, I, I like the idea of tree planting. Uh, I, I think that the bits of conversations that we'd had recently was just some slight concerns from some of those residents facing it of um you know of obviously a park being put there but i think i think the tree planting will go a long way i suppose the only the only slight danger is is, is that visibility as 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 we've learned from previous parks you've got to get that fine balance between something that's uh, not disrupting local residents but also something that's there's not blind spots and opportunities for activities that we wouldn't want to see in the park so yeah but I, I love the idea of planting more trees and, and 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 the growing space as well i think it's brilliant and and the multi-age element of it as well so it's not just for children you know i think there might be a little bit more that could be done hopefully some of the older residents in the bungalows will come along next week and maybe they might have an idea of something they'd like to see some a seating area or something but yeah i i, I think it's brilliant i think thanks jonathan that's that's fantastic Thank you. Yes, I mean, I'm trying to introduce this idea of intergenerational play. It's not just for one group, it's for everyone and anyone and everyone can legitimately use a space for different ways and different reasons. And it is supposed to be a space that is in the center of this community and can really bring people together here. So that's what I've tried to achieve in, in the design. Yeah, the design looks excellent. Uh, I, I particularly like is it the roundabout that's at the bottom where um, 
as a, a young a child in a wheelchair who's able to access it. But that's um, I've always asked for uh, equipment that's accessible to uh, children with disabilities. So thank you. That's very much welcomed. Uh, Kasper, I think one of the things just that's just worth re-emphasising is what uh, Jonathan has said in terms of these are indicative. So the, the, there does need to be a very proactive um, conversation about identifying, you know, the actual pieces of equipment to go in here, and and obviously we 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 are uh, trying not to you know presume that the surrounding uh, residents are also actually going to fall into step on this because this will be a significant change to the feel of the, of that area of the estate but i think it will, will be a case of emphasizing the uh, the benefits yeah um or what we're trying to achieve here okay thank you um yeah thank you so we'll uh, we'll be going out speaking to residents and um, listening to their feedback. I think there's one more question from Dan. Dan from Work Unlimited, Dan. Uh, I, partly just to echo uh, Paul's point, I think um, fantastic to see the plans and um, that. I think, yeah, people have been listened to, which is great. I think just to, um, I think one of the, the things that was really important about the Bromford North Park was consultation, particularly with young people and ensuring that their voices were heard in in that process as well. And I think that's something that gives them that ownership of of that space going forward and the less likelihood of them causing any damage to it and taking a bit of responsibility for the area. So I think just to highlight that as a, a process that I would a I'd put my hand up to help that process. Um, but just something I think would be really important going forward, particularly um, maybe linking in with first primary school um, just to get some. Uh, yes, yeah, some feedback from particularly the uh, students from from that school, but um, as, as well as local residents. Um, and then my only other one was actually just a bit of an inquisitive question. Um, the part, the path that runs through is probably a design reason. Is there a reason why there's not a connection of the path on the top? left hand corner to connect it from that direction. Um, it's it's purely levels really um, it is quite a there's quite a, a mound between here and that and the main path. We could put one if people felt that was something that was really needed. But at the moment we are just trying to minimize disruption and earth moving on the site and without excavating quite a lot of soil and possibly putting in ramp systems to get over that. Um, We've just tried to keep it um, as as existing as much as possible on that side. I mean, the other thing that Dan is, I've actually asked for them to to bear in mind um, what, what we've basically um, said to the residents who live immediately adjacent to that three years ago. Because essentially, um, what, what we effectively said then was the primary focus would be on the under 12s play area. Yeah. So and we are very mindful of the fact that, you know, that, that they are wary of this of the level of disruption. So if we are going in there, I think it's only only fair to minimize that disruption to 50 percent. But you can see the change in levels there on this photo. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. I mean, the, the only thing would be is where, if there's a way of making a feature of that mound. And I don't know what that maybe just through planting or something. But yeah, just so it's not a mound that just looks like it's been left. But I'm sure you guys yes. have got yes. that. <laughs> um, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. OK, logistically, there's also the other thing you've got to bear in mind is we is we, when we, we took this to, to cabinet for the um, for the budget approval, in 2020, we were estimating this would be about £200,000. Now, there's been cost increases since, so we're trying to be sensitive to the fact that we do not want to promise the earth if we cannot deliver it effectively. So we're trying to, 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 to be focusing on, on a scheme of a scale which will fall within a manageable budget, which we think we can sell. I will be going back to cabinet um, with, with, a, with a new report at the end of the year, which will hopefully give me the opportunity to uplift the existing budget to take account of inflation. But um, that that's important because this 
will be developed on the back of the housing development on Berendale. Yeah, in terms of in terms of the planning approvals. So it's important that I have an idea of how much it's going to cost and I have those approvals in place. OK. Thank you, Ron. Um, Paul, is that a legacy hand or do you want to come in? Yeah, there's um, something else came into my head. Um, just a thought, the top right hand corner in that in that picture, I, I, it was just a thought about is there a way in the housing development plans, I know Ron's not going to want to change the plans again, but just wondering <laughs> whether there could be an extension of, of a path to just to link up to the cycle track. Um, I think what's lovely about Bromford North Park and, and what will be lovely about the other <clears throat> so the, the, the park outside the shops is that they both have a direct access to the walking path. It was just a thought whether there could be a way of incorporating a, a, a cycle linkage to the to the um, the flood defence path, and again, it'll just link. It'll just make that all interconnected. It was just a just a thought. Noted. I mean, the, the work we've done today is largely confined to the area where the housing will take place. But as part of the the detailed design for the um, road improvement works, the, the, there will be dialogue about road markings, etc., which will almost certainly extend beyond the perimeter of the site. But that's not, not a discussion which I want to um, preempt, basically, because that's uh, that, that'll be something where most of, of what we will be asked to do will be done based on um, council's existing guidelines and requirements. And we will we'll effectively be told what, what we can and cannot do effectively. To, because the, 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 um, the emphasis will be on road safety. Yeah. I mean, that, that was part of my thought, really, just you know, the, 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 it's quite small, relatively small, but it, you know, if, if there's going to be people up and down that cycle path, it'd be nice to make it so accessible that they don't have to get off bikes and cross roads to to get to it. Yep, good, good comment, Paul. Yeah, good point. Um, let's see any other hand up, so um, we can move on now. So I'd like to thank. Ron and Jonathan for coming along this evening and taking time out of their their annual leave to do so. We really appreciate it. Um, but it was important to get this out to 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 people, uh, but so that they they know what um, what is being planned. And I Paul, look forward not... to meeting people next week and 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 working with local communities to to address any concerns and and work together to improve the plan uh, for everyone. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you in Bromford. Thank, thank you, you. See you next week. See you next week. Bye bye. Uh, thank you, Ron. Um, Paul, Paul, is there something else that you wanted to say? Before? Sorry, I just had, I had two questions for Ron, if that was OK. About what you yes, were talking go about ahead. before. Um, <laughs> Ron. I just just a, a question on the, the park outside the, the shops. Is, is it, are you still confident for a spring next year? For that to be built, because then that was the that was the conversation that was the conversation that had happened before. Okay, the the conversation is is based on the premise that yes, we we are. We, it is still possible to get the approvals for through in that time scale and to and to manage to to to, to get someone appointed. Yeah, and the closer we get to to the end of the year, if, if we aren't sorted, then I'll come back and I'll adjust accordingly. But at this point in time, it's doable. And that's the time. That's yeah. the target. It's just, I think that because that's the message that's in the community. So I just if it changes, obviously, just make sure we can communicate. I think the other uh, question I had was um, when the flood defence is open, when it's finished, mm. will the whole path be open and accessible? So Christmas, January next year, will the, will the whole length of the flood defence path be open at that stage? That's my understanding. So we'll be able to walk the whole length. Yes. Brilliant. I was just excited. So. Okay. so I've done half of it about 100 times already. I just want to do the whole thing. <laughs> We're all Brilliant. looking Thank forward you. to that, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK. Brilliant. Um, yeah. Once again, Ron, thanks. Thank you. Thank you for coming along and doing your presentation. And um, we'll see you well, soon and enjoy the rest of your 
and you'll leave. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we'll move on. Um, do the next presentation, and I have Diren Katwa from um, Balfour B. Two Vinci. Good evening, Diren, and thank you for coming along. Uh, very to good the evening. The Hill Board meeting, Board Forum. Very good evening, Councillor Donaldson, and also everyone present at this uh, virtual meeting. Uh, if I can just share my screen. Can you see that? Yes, I can see that. Can everybody yeah. see that? Brilliant. Uh, well, I had hoped to uh, do this as a double act with my colleague Lukash, uh, but unfortunately he had to, he did join, but he had to leave at seven because he's traveling abroad this evening. Uh, so he, he sends his apologies. Uh, so I shall uh, do my best to rattle through these slides um, and uh, take any questions at the end. Um, So in terms of sort of uh, HS2 Balfour BT Vinci, so Balfour BT Vinci is the contractor uh, for the uh, construction works within this area. Uh, and as you can see there, uh, that's just a very high level sort of illustration of uh, the M6, uh, of, of the Bromford Viaduct, which is uh, near the M6 motor, motorway. To be honest, I don't know what more to say on this, so I'm just gonna move on. Again, these are some indicative dates. Now, before Lukash left, I did speak to him, and uh, the the message that I've been asked to give is the local community and residents within Bromford and Hodgill are highly unlikely to be impacted by these works. So the main works upcoming over the next couple of weeks are basically testing works, ground investigations, trial holes, and this is all uh, in advance of main construction works, which are planned for early to uh, mid next year. And this is all related to the TBM. Uh, TBM basically stands for Tunnel Boring Machine. I'll come on to that shortly. This is more a sort of map illustration of the same thing which I shared with you earlier, the area. Uh, so you can see the sort of M6 motorway there and the viaduct which will be uh, interfacing with the tunnel. Again this is a high level overall construction timeline uh, so as I mentioned earlier uh, we've got ground investigations, um, trial holes, diaphragm wall basically. The diaphragm wall is basically a wall which needs to be constructed before the tunnel boring machine is introduced and that uh, introduction of the tunnel boring machine is planned for, as I say, early to mid next year. Some works in Castle Bromwich, Castle Vale, uh, we've got between the 2nd to the 30th of September, uh, Thameside Drive and along the A45 to Chester Road near the Holiday Inn Express. These are cadent gas works. So basically these are trial holes um, which are going to be carried out by uh, our contractor and I sort of uh, sub subcontractors, and as I mentioned, the ground investigation works. Going back to an earlier slide, so the tunnel boring machine, uh, just a quick sort of re uh, overview, if I may, uh, Councillor Donaldson, uh, uh, the tunnel boring machine, which was named Dorothy in Long Itchington Ward in Warwickshire, it was launched last December and it has just broken through at Long Itchington Wood uh, a couple of weeks ago. Now there's going to be a second bore, and once that tunnel starts boring from Long Itchington Wood, it will travel through uh, uh, Water Orton and coming towards Castle Bromwich and Washwood Heath, and then will carry on towards the north. So the tunnel boring machine is basically a machine which grinds through the earth, uh, creating cavity and space for the actual HS2 tunnel, which will be built. Uh, there are talks of a naming competition. I know Councillor Donaldson, you'd expressed uh, an interest last year when we spoke about Dorothy. Uh, there are talks of a naming competition for the uh, Bromford tunnel. 
uh, but I unfortunately I don't have any more information on that at this stage. Uh, this is just a reminder for those who have already attended this meeting in previous uh, uh, occasions. There's a community environment fund, uh, which we call CEF, uh, which uh, organizations, community groups can tap into. Um, and I know Worth in Limited uh, uh, is represented on this meeting. And my understanding is Susan Bridges uh, from HS2 has given uh, regular talks to the organization. Uh, so uh, my sort of message to people on this call is if you are running a charity or a local community group, no matter how big or small it might be, and if you require any assistance, um, then please do contact myself and I can certainly put you in touch with relevant colleagues. Again, there's the business and local economy fund uh, money available. Uh, and uh, there's my contact details. Um, so again, just to reiterate, this is a very high level overview. Uh, and as I said earlier, uh, I had hoped that Lukas had joined me, but unfortunately he's had to go. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, the impact of our works to residents and people on this forum is going to be highly unlikely. That said, we have had uh, one or two complaints about noise and vibration uh, in the area. Uh, but these the, the, these noise this noise has been actually coming from other contractors. So this is a bit of a gray area, not a cop out, a gray area. But please uh, do contact me. There are my contact details, and I will uh, do my best to uh, answer any questions. And finally, just moving on to any questions. Are you on mute, Councillor Donaldson? Oh, you're, you're on mute, Councillor. Oh, sorry, I'm on mute. <laughs> thank you. OK, thank you, dear, and thank you for the presentation. One and final thing I've just remembered talking about yeah. Long Itchington Wood is at Long Itchington Wood, we have a visitor centre. Um, it's It basically gives a high level overview of uh, HS2 in the Midlands, and it's actually a site where uh, you can actually see the scale of works. We've not been promoting it too actively because I'm the only person hosting these visits. But if anybody on this call would like to visit, then please drop me a line and uh, I shall be very uh, happy to sort of uh, take you along and uh, show you the site. Yes, thank I'd you, be interested in, Thank you, Dara. I'd be very much interested in visiting and, and perhaps if there are any residents that would like to come along and see see the uh, see the long long Chington Wood. Where is that exactly? It's in Warwickshire, near Southam, in Warwickshire. Oh, South near, Warwickshire. South, near Leamington Spa, that way? N very near, absolutely. Yeah, indeed, okay. indeed. Okay. And I'd just like to say a very big thank you to uh, Councillor Donaldson and also, also to Beverly. Uh, I know we have these meetings quarterly, but just for everyone's uh, information, uh, Councillor Donaldson does email me and get in touch with me uh, on, on occasions. Uh, to sort of let me know about any resident, any complaints or any inquiries that residents might have. And we re have that regular dialogue. So I'm really grateful. It's not just this meeting that we turn up and we uh, do a bit of a presentation. It's it's a two way conversation and a very meaningful and effective conversation, if I may say so. Thank you, dear Anne. And I appreciate every time I've been in touch, you've always managed to <laughs> sort out the, the issue uh, Thank you. effectively. Thank you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at Long Itchington Wood. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. Any, right, any questions well, thank, from Thank anyone? you for your time this evening. And, uh, Pleasure's mine. You, uh, nobody, there's no further questions, I believe, from anyone here. So don't see any hands up. So you're free to go. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks very thank much. Thank you. Okay. All right. So if we can. Move on. I don't think we've got any more. Uh, we've had all of the presentations now, so we can move on to um, item four, which is the Commonwealth Games celebrating communities fund events in the ward. So if we we can just have um, some updates from, and I believe we've got uh, Dan from Worth Unlimited who's going to give a presentation update on on what. Uh, what work they've been doing in the ward. Hello, Dan. Hello. Um, so I haven't, I've not 
done like a PowerPoint or anything, so I'll just that's, give that's a verbal no, update. It's just I mean, a, a brief, a brief no update. Problem. So we um, we had funding through the active um, uh, element of the um, funding. So our events were based around uh, street sports, um, and the funding that we got was to provide a number of um, events rather than kind of one big event. So. Um, over the summer, we've been uh, delivering. So far, we've delivered six street sport sessions um, based down at the Bromford uh, North Park. Uh, Councillor Majid Mahmood uh, showed off his tennis skills at one of them. <laughs> um, and they've been going really well. So what we've done is they've been multi-sport sessions with a focus uh, on one particular sport. Um, as the kind of main thing and then some different kind of sports and activities based around uh, the one thing. So uh, tennis uh, was, uh, street tennis was one of the ones that was the first focus. We've done tag rugby, we've done table tennis and we've done uh, uni hoc um, and then some various kind of um, other kind of team sports and games around that. Um, and then our, our kind of bigger event towards the end of the summer um, is an it's a knockout uh, competition Community Day on the on the second of September. Um, we've probably a averaged around, other than the last couple, we've averaged about thirty young people down at the park um, per session, uh, and we've had over, well over a hundred different young people throughout those six sessions so far. With some of those being obviously multiple attendees at, at different events. So, um, yeah, they've, they've been really good. And actually, I mean, just to just to highlight the park has been a really good resource um, that we've been able to use and access um, over the summer to base these um, sessions at. We made the decision that we wanted to use that use that facility really and encourage uh, others to, to be using it as well. So it, I think, I mean, it actually highlighted the lack of it last year a little bit, but it's been great to have that as a resource uh, to be able to use this year. And I think just being down there and seeing the life that it's, it's bringing to the community has, has been really good and being able to just, yeah, encourage residents and, and young people to kind of access that. So, I mean, it's been really positive. Um, it's been a really good way of us shaping our youth activity over um, over the summer, it's really built on an existing play project that uh, we're, we're being funded by Children in Need uh, during term time. And it's given it a real focus and a, and a bit of a expansion and energy really to, to kind of be able to continue that over the summer period. So, um, yeah, it's been really positive. Um, and like I said, we've got um, another two session, one session next week. Um, and then the it's a knockout competition still to go as well. So, yeah, been been really positive. Thank you, Dan. And uh, um, um, I attended one of the events today, and it looked uh, really good. And the young people in attendance were having great fun. So yeah. So um, we've kind of worked. Uh, so I mean, Paul will give an update on his. So the street events have kind of been through through Paul's funding, but they've been okay. very much a, a team. So that the sports sessions have happened separate on a Monday and Tuesday. Right. But we've also been in attendance and supporting. Um, the Furs and Bromford neighbours together and the Together We Can street events, really. So, um, but Paul can update you on the street events. because. Okay, great. so we've got um, up and coming events. We've got, it's a knockout. When When is that? Second, Friday, the 2nd of September, if that's the right date for that and Friday. It's the very last, um, the very last Friday of um, the summer. Yeah, and that will be at what time? Uh, I think it's one till three and that's outside, okay. um, outside the pub so the in the green space. Yeah. Bromford Drive. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you for that, Dan. Yeah, it's been um, very enlightening, enlightening, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm currently I'm half supervising a youth work session. Are you right? If I make yes, yeah, my you're pretty good. Go. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for your time, and brilliant. We, we appreciate everything you're doing, and no worries. Thanks really very much. Really looking good. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Um, right, next I'll ask um, Mohamed Ishak if he could present on behalf of the uh, Mega Mailer, please. Good evening, uh, Mohamed, I think you're on mute. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Thank you. I hope everybody's well. We're all good. Thank you. Okay, and well, hope you are too. 
Okay. Um, basically, the report back is is that uh, all the long and um, kind of like uh, planning and delivery has taken place for the Mega Miller. Um, the Mega Miller happened on the 23rd and 24th of July. Um, we had um, on the Saturday youth sport uh, and and other activities, along with the full fun fair, um, all the stalls for food and non-food. Uh, information, um, dissemination, etc. On the Sunday, we had um, 80 horses participating in horse tent pegging, um, and that was within an arena that we had to uh, construct uh, for the appropriate sport and safety. All the permits uh, around live music, uh, around um, you know, animal safety, uh, all the other kind of requirements from Birmingham City Council were fulfilled. Uh, we had an attendance of about 15,000 on the Saturday and probably 16,000 on the Sunday. We had a kabaddi match after the uh, horse tent pegging uh, and the live music on the Sunday that accounted for uh, the increase in attendance. The weather was blisteringly hot, so uh, blue skies and, and, and sunshine. Um, and I believe, um, you know, quite a few councillors attended. Um, it's very sad to say that former Lord Mayor, Councillor Zim, also attended. He was very, um, uh, very courteous to us about, uh, you know, his invite and about being shown around. So it's very sad that he's now passed. But that was one of my last meetings with him. Um, and all in all, it was a, a very um, successful day. Um, I mean, you were there also, Councillor Donaldson. I, 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 I was on you. the Sunday. Um, I'm fanatical about horses so I, I would never miss the tent pegging and it was it was excellent um yeah it was, it was a brilliant event very very hot day in my sad but it so, was um very well attended i've had a lot of positive feedback from residents in um, bromford and hodge hill who uh always attend that event and um yeah sadly it was the the last event that um council azim attended um, we are still waiting on uh, some of the invoices to come back, and I think we've suffered uh, similar to uh, the cost of living um, increases. Uh, there was a lot of um, price rises as time was coming up to the event because of the shortage of event um, equipment and resources. Uh, normally, we could get most of our supplies and contractors within Birmingham. We've had to go further afield, and therefore the cost increased. Uh, that was because of supply and demand and what have you. So what we're looking to do is uh, report back to all the uh, funders with the, uh, the paperwork to support all our spend that we've had from uh, Birmingham City Council um, quite graciously. Uh, other than that, um, I think we've worked out at about £1.25 per person who attended as a cost. So a cost-benefit analysis is that it's been quite a good value for money. Yeah, definitely good value for money. And uh, I'd like to thank you for all you've done and to all, all of the organisers. I think they've done extremely well under difficult circumstances with the cost of living increase. Um, what was originally budgeted, that their costs have gone through the roof. So everybody has done extremely well with, with the budgeting aspect of, of these events. So thank you, Mohammed. Thank you for coming along this evening. Anything like that? Sorry? Any questions from anybody? Any questions? No, I think you covered everything. <laughs> OK. Thank you. Thank you. OK, thank you for coming along. Thank you. OK, bye-bye. Bye, bye. 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 All right, and I... Um, is Salma... Salma B? Still here? No, Catherine, she was here, but she's, uh, I think she's dropped off the call. Oh, so okay. um, maybe no she'll come to the next meeting. Yeah. That's uh, okay with you. Okay. That's fine. Yes, we've all got um, Tina and uh, Nura who are coming to the next meeting. Yeah. So that's not a problem um, if she couldn't. Okay. Wait. Okay. Okay, we'll move over to Paul Wright from the Hub if you'd like to present now, please. Hi, um, I haven't got a 
PowerPoint either, same as Dan. But um, I'll just I'll just talk you through kind of what we, it's got. It's gone very dark, so it was. It's gone dark since this meeting start, started. Um, and the last one. There you go. It's a bit better. Um, so yeah, we we just a reminder. We we were funded to do uh, six uh, six cultural events, and then we were funded to well we were because every, everybody was half funded so we had match funding to do our, our normal big summer event um so what we what we've actually done is we've utilized uh the street events um and we're going to do seven street events in total with commonwealth games themed uh, cultural events trying to bring together the community and then we're going to finish with an event uh, on bank holiday monday which I'll talk a bit more in a minute about what, what the plan is for that. Um, so, so far we've done uh, five of those events. Um, different sizes, each one slightly different. So they're all in different parts of Furs and Bromford. And uh, we've had anywhere between, probably the, today's the one that uh, the councillor came along to, is probably the, the lowest attended. I think we had between 40 and 50 people. Uh, and we worked with um, the Active Wellbeing Society today who, who provided the sports, which was really good. And then we've had up to kind of 100, 150 people at some of the street parties. So they've been they've been really good. Um, we've had music, uh, face painting, uh, as Dan talked about, kind of sports, games. Um, and we've had people cooking food. So local residents have brought food from the different cultures. Um, we had a couple of them were... Um, with Elaine, I think Elaine's on the call. So a couple of them were working with Elaine uh, and doing um, an afternoon tea with Bingo. So kind of bringing together different ages and cultures. And it, so they've been, they've been really, really good. Um, the weather has been fab up until today. If anything, too hot. Um, a couple of the events last week were just unbearable at times, but they've been, they've been brilliant and kind of really brought the community together. And then, We've got two more to go next week um, and then those street events will be finished. And one of those events is is um, at Berendale Road where the park is going to be. And that's that's the event that um, Jonathan was talking about. So the guys will be there to talk about the park and engage residents at that event. So um, that would be great. And uh, the final event. So we wanted to do a bit of a a thing that brought it all together. So on Bank Holiday Monday, uh, 12 to 4, um, at Bromford Bridge um, Church, um, working with Costa there. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a food festival. Uh, we'll have inflatables and uh, games for the children. And we just want to try and bring it all together. So the theme of our project was we wanted to find out what's the Commonwealth of Furs and Bromford. So what are all the different cultures, nationalities, languages uh, that bring that that exist in our neighbourhood? You know, what's our Commonwealth? And the other part of what we've tried to find out through activities is what are the things that kind of unite us? Um, so at that event, we're hoping to kind of give a bit of a flavour of what we found out. And uh, um, so that should be a really nice end end to our project. So our project will will finish on that on that date and, and be done and dusted by the end of August. Paul, oh, can I just um, check the, those dates out? So we've got the Berendale Road event, and that's taking place on the twenty fourth of August. Is that yeah. Correct? So that's next Wednesday. If that's the right yeah. date. And, um, and and the times on that one. So that's one till four in the afternoon. One till four. Okay. And, and then we've got. The bank the, holiday Monday, which is the 29th. Yeah, and then we've and got that. that that's 12. That one. That's 12 to 4. 12 to 4. Thank you. And then going back, the Thursday is the paddock. We're going to do one on the paddock. So that's the right, 20, that's is that 25th of August. 25th. So going back to the 25th, Thursday the and, 25th. And that's 1 to 4 as well. 1 to 4. And yeah. that's at the paddock, and that's at um, that's off Reynolds Town Road. Yeah. If anybody, yeah, can, yeah, that, that's uh, the rear of Reynolds Town Road, Stratford Walk. Yeah, yeah. And then um, before I forget, um, we had our our big summer event um, on Saturday, just gone, 
uh, outside the, the shops on Bromford Drive. Um, it was so hot, blisteringly hot. Um, I've, I never thought I never thought that in the UK we'd have to think about not having an event because it's too hot. <laughs> Normally because it's going to pour with rain or it's too windy, but we literally had conversations thinking, do we need to cancel it because it's too hot? But we decided to go ahead. Uh, we had about 500 people, um, minuscule compared to the Mega Mella, um, but we had, uh, it was you know, a lovely event. We had sports with Dan, we had a band, we had DJ, um, we had Peace Tent, uh, we had rides, inflatables. It was a, a really nice event, and I think I think really people really really appreciate because we'd not done that for three years, and I think I think people have really missed that that big the big event. So um, that you know, lots of lovely feedback, and uh, yeah, that was a really good a good thing to have back. And also, what's been lovely is it's been lovely to kind of in essence bring the Commonwealth Games to to Furs and Bromford because I think you know not many people that I've spoke to managed to get tickets or got you know went to things um but it's really felt like we brought the games to the which is kind of what this funding was about so there's, there's really a real sense that we've kind of we've marked the Commonwealth Games coming to Birmingham in, in our own way which has been which has been brilliant so yeah so the funding's been a great thing and uh yeah uh, it's great it's, it's, and we've got a legacy from it as well mm. so the legacy remains, um, mm. the sporting activities will be carried on, the events will be carried on um, long after the Games is forgotten about, so that's yeah. really welcome. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, thank you, Paul, and, and the events have been wonderful, positive feedback, uh, and from what I see, the kids are really having the time of their lives, so it's all good, and thank you. Um, thank you. Do we have any questions? Anyone would like to comment or... Okay, that's it then. Well, thank you thank for you. Your, coming along this evening and spending your time uh, and, and giving us the update. Right. Um, and that's all of the presentations for this evening. I think at the next meeting, we'll have um, Salma and uh, Nora who will update. Um, I missed anyone. Oh, and Tina, who will update at the uh, the next meeting. Right, so uh, let's move on. move on to the the local news and uh, updates from councillors. So, first item updates from the ward. So, well, basically, there's a lot of a lot has been happening, and it's mainly about Commonwealth Games. Um, so, we've been focusing on that. So, it's not just in the ward but citywide um i think uh the games has made all is extremely proud we're, we're all extremely proud of, of of what the games have, have brought to birmingham and i think it'll be a lasting legacy which we'll we will see citywide and and in our ward of bromford and uh, of bromford and hodge hill um the um other issues in the ward. I think the main issues currently are speeding. That's and that's um, something I'm hearing a lot about lately. So we're um, in discussions with the council and seeing if we can get some average speed cameras. Uh, I know it's a long-winded process, but we're looking into that. Um, is anybody? Does anybody have any questions or comments around that? Oh, OK. Uh, Paul, yep. Uh, which whereabouts are you particularly thinking with the speed? I know Bromford Drive is is an ongoing issue. Bromford I was actually talking, Drive, I, I was talking to someone today about it. And... Yeah, or because it's already got speed bumps, so that would be the average speed cameras wouldn't be wouldn't be suitable for the average speed cameras. Um, so mainly the, the main uh, roads like Cozel Road, Bromford Lane in the big roads, uh, especially Curzel Road when people coming are coming off the motorway and Stetchford, Stetchford Road. Uh, those are the main roads and Brockhurst Road as well, the cut through road where people there are high performance cars. And I think it's, and I think mainly 
noisy exhaust. That's another thing that I'm hearing a lot about. Um, I think Collingbourne Avenue might be worth adding to that list. That's because a cut through. But I, I, I mean, I, yeah. I think I think the the traffic measures on Bromford Drive are just not. They're not effective. The, the bumps aren't effective. Um, there is regular speeding up and down there. Mm. Um, yeah, they, the they, 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 they help like, a little um, bit, but the bumps don't. Sit, the, pe the, the per people that speed, they are not bothered about the bumps, frankly. They just drive over them, from what I can see. So, um, so I'll add, add Collingbourne Avenue. I haven't had any uh, feedback from residents, so if uh, I, I'm asking residents to feedback any issues, if they do have any issues with um, speeding on their roads, get back to me so this can all be fed back to the police. Who uh, were invited to attend this evening, um, I did ask for an update from the police, but uh, that hasn't been forthcoming. Uh, I'd like to say that the uh, Bromford, there are about three active group street watch street watch groups in the ward. Um, we're going out actively. Uh, I've sort of dropped off during the hot weather because uh, it's just been too hot. But hopefully, we'll be having some more street watch meetings imminently. Um, probably we're due for one in Bromford and. There's another group who operate around the Buckland End area and the Hodge Hill group, which usually meet up around Tesco's um, probably once or twice, at least once a week on a Friday evening. So any comments or questions? Okay. Well, I'll push for um, the update from the police and we'll be able to give you more information on that next week. And as soon as I hear back from the council on the average speed cameras, I'll update residents on that. Um, other than that, is any other issues that people would like to, to raise? Councillor, I think Natalie oh, wanted okay. to... Oh, it's fair. Oh. Natalie wanted to uh, give an update, Natalie from the NNS, if she's still oh, okay, on the call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I just take Paul first of all? And yeah, of course. We'll move yeah. over to Natalie. Hi, Paul. Um, is there any update on the situation with Jordan House and the Jordan works, House, yes. the, the works um, that are happening on that block? I know that. Yeah. Yeah, Jordan House. A, a letter went out at the beginning of um, August to uh, update all the residents. So they've got, they have got all the updates and um, I believe all the issues have been, the water ingress has been repaired now. Um, Equans were invited but haven't, Equans have been attending the HLB meetings and updating there but we've uh, we've not had Equans come along to a ward forum, so I'll write to Equans and ask them for a, uh, an update because this was beginning beginning of August, so it might be things might have changed consider considerably since the then. Um, I've not. There was a couple of issues with water during extremely hot weather but I believe that was down to the electric failure which affected the water pumps or something but those have been rectified and um, um, I've had no no complaints this week so everything seems to be okay at the moment unless there's uh, residents can tell me otherwise. No, I've not heard anything since no. uh, back end of July. But um, I think there was, I think there was a promise of regular updates, and I think, um, yeah, I think, yes, yeah, just keeping that communication going mm, with those think, with uh, those block yeah. tenants. Yeah, I request an update from Equans, but they are so. I think the next update they will give will be the beginning of September. But the letter they they they've done one for July, and I have those 
that's the Equans mm. update for August. I don't know if you can see it, but mm. oh, it probably doesn't display very well on the screen. But um, one went out at the beginning of July and uh, one went out at the beginning of August. So I expect the next one will be at the beginning of se September and it went out to every home in, in Jordan House. Uh, but I will push for an update and it's something that I'll put on the put on the Facebook page. Mm, cool, thank you. OK, um, any other points? So that's about it. There's the fly out, as, as we were discussing earlier, the fly chipping seems to be um, getting increased. It, not so much fly tipping in the ward as, as previously. The um, mobile household recycling centres uh, um, have been very successful. The lorries have been going away for. Um, so we've got the next one, which I'd like to announce is on the 30, Wednesday, the 31st of August, and it will be in Doncaster Way, and it will be from 7 a.m. till 11.30 a.m. Um, the, the crews are going away a little earlier because because of the heat, basically, so, and the lorries being full. So uh, 7 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. on the 31st on Doncaster Way. But, so if you could spread the word amongst the residents and get everyone to go, to go along and dispose of their unwanted. We'll be um, leaf, leafleting the Bromford uh, this weekend, so all the residents in Bromford will have the details. And I think that's all from me. So I'll move swiftly over to Natalie because we are running out of time. So Natalie, if you'd like to uh, update us, please. Thanks, Councillor. Um, it was just really to to make make you all aware and I guess remind you that um, we still have funding available. Um, I'm not sure how long ago it was that, that I was at the last ward forum. It's been a good couple of months. Um, I know that much. Um, so, so yeah, it's just to kind of um, let you know that we still have funding available. We, we have funding for two streams now, not just one. So we still have the over 50s um, funding, but we also have um, younger adults with a long-term disability. Um, and so that's, that's anyone between 18 and 49 um, that have um uh autism learning disability uh physical disability sensory impairment um or mental health um and so uh, i just wanted to yeah take a moment of your time to to remind you that we we have that funding available i know that there's a few community groups on here today um but also to to you know the the professionals from the council um or, or any other um team that are aware of some local community groups that are looking to to tackle some some issues um to kind of yeah put them in touch with me if possible um i think i've mentioned before you know we funded projects um around like fly tipping so trying to make spaces um i guess less accessible to to dump rubbish so we have done that before um so so yeah that that's pretty much it oh and sorry that and, and last thing is we obviously have training available um as well so i'll pop my email in the chat but but if you, if you're interested yeah. or if you know of anyone that's I, interested I've got your email. if anybody doesn't pick it up in the chat get um please get in contact with me and i'll put you in touch with natalie um can i just ask natalie is the um the funding is it for groups or is it directly available to individuals with autism yeah, so it, it's for groups, um, okay. unfortunately. So then there, there needs to be some form of structure. Um, okay. We do have micro funding available for really, really informal groups, um, which is up to five hundred pounds. Um, but that would obviously need to go to to a project. Um, but you know, we're here to support anyone that's maybe just starting out or wants to to develop something locally. Um, so yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you for that, Natalie. That's most helpful. Thank, thank you, you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Really appreciate your, your time. Um, is there anybody else that would like to uh, announce anything or got any questions, comments? 
No. Okay. Well, I think we'll, um, it's three minutes past eight now, so we can. Um, there's no any other business, and um, the date of the next meeting is yet to be confirmed. So with that, I'll bring the meeting to a close and thank you everyone for attending this evening. It's been very informative and thank you for all your presentations. And to